something really for South Africans to be proud of. Now, tell me about when you were first introduced to Dr. Suleiman. I met Dr. Suleiman many, many years ago, before, in fact, he'd founded Gift to the Givers. He was a member of the Islamic Medical Association, and I saw this doctor giving a talk at a public function, and I went there as a journalist. And uh, what I noticed from the very beginning was his enthusiasm, his vigorousness, and his never-say-die attitude. And those are some of the characters and, and qualities, I think, that have kept him going for the past uh, 20 or so years. Now, we often hear Dr. Suleiman on the radio, we see him on TV, we have this idea of what he's like, but, but we don't get to the experience of seeing him in person like you did. Can you tell us about, about him? What motivates him to stay in Gift of the Givers and continue doing this wonderful aid work? What motivates him is a sense of, of being a servant of mankind. He's based um, religiously, but in the sense that it's universal. He um, is a Sufi, which is um, the, one of the spiritual paths in the religion of Islam. And it's a spiritual path that says that you have to help any human being unconditionally, no matter where you might find them in any part of the world. Mm -hmm. So this is basically his ethos. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you're from Mars, whether you're from... Niger, Nigeria, whether you're from uh, Kailicha, his duty is to help people. And he was given this inspiration by a Sufi Sheikh in Istanbul, mm -hmm. who in 1992 was at a gathering and he looked at uh, Imtiaz and he said, my son, you are going to form an organization. It will be called Gift of the Givers and you will serve humanity for the rest of your life. You will serve humanity irrespective of religion, color or creed. And just remember one thing, Everything you do will be done through you, and you must be grateful if you just get a kick up your back. And that was basically wow. the start of his organization. That's incredible. Now, how does he carry himself? What, tell us about Dr. Suleiman when he's, when he's out in the field, when you've gone with him on a mission. What's, what's that like? His mind never stops. He never, he's, he's got two telephones. They never stop going. I've been told that by him. <laughs> His telephones never stop ringing. Well, I mean, I can remember in, on one mission waking up at 3 o'clock in the middle of the night and Suleiman Imtaz was still going for it. His phones were going ballistic. In fact, I couldn't get back to sleep after that. In fact, don't share a hotel room with him because you're not going to sleep. Jeez. He, he doesn't sleep. Um, he's on the go all the time. And the other thing is his optimism. No is just another opportunity to get a yes as far as he's concerned. And it's this persistence, mm -hmm. this optimism, and his good manners as well that opens doors where you, you can't, cannot believe, in fact. Mm -hmm. Now, you write about Dr. Suleiman's premonitions. Can you tell us about those? Yes, you know, he will, he will say, I've got a feeling that something big is going to happen. And when he says that, his staff start cancelling their leave because they know that it's going to hit big time. And there have been numerous times when he's been on holiday with his family, 2004 with a tsunami, he was on, on holiday in Cape Town and the tsunami hit. But within 48 hours he had people on an aeroplane flying towards the Far East. Wow. And, and this is what happens. And in Pakistan uh, he got lost. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, no, I'm going to follow my instincts. And he followed his instincts and he got back to camp. It was in a very dangerous part of the country and if you would have gone, taken a wrong turning, it could have been a wrong turning for the worse. Yeah. So he, he, he sort of, it's amazing how he uses his instincts. He says prayer helps him. Well, it certainly helps the mission as well. Yeah. 